Thank you, Rob. Secretary Levitt, Secretary Peek, and distinguished members of the AHIP, it is my distinct honor and privilege to serve as the ONC lead for the NHIN. ONC is proud today to present to you the culmination of work on core set of capabilities for the Nationwide Health Information Network. Introducing this part of the presentation is Dr. Tau Todd Rowland from Bloomington Hospital in Indiana. Thank you. Good morning. Um, as a practicing physician, I'm very pleased to be here with Dr. Overhej and present the emergency care scenario. You'll see here on the slides a very logical region of eight health information exchanges that provide an information health safety net. So this, it's very logical that someone could be traveling in this region and their health information is available in time of emergency. Next slide. <clears throat> Joseph Binglefan is a 65-year-old gentleman uh, who's traveled to Indianapolis for a Colts and Bengals game. Suddenly he collapses at, during the second play of the game and becomes unresponsive. Fortunately, someone nearby him contacts 911 and mobilizes an ambulance. Next slide. So for Joe, this has become a blur. And as he's transported to any one of the 32 emergency rooms in central Indiana that are connected to the INPC, the Indiana Network for Patient Care, he's going to be taken care of. Dr. Overhish, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Rowland. Having practiced emergency medicine for almost 20 years, uh, it's not uncommon to be confronted with a patient where historical information is critical to make the right choice and to help make the diagnosis clearer. Mr. Bengelfin is an example of this. On the right-hand screen, you see a live application, the Indiana Network for Patient Care. When the patient arrives in the emergency department, we obviously focus on stabilizing the patient, obtaining initial laboratory assessments, electrocardiogram, and so on. Mr. Bengelfin's initial electrocardiogram shows a left bundle branch block, making the diagnosis less than clear. While we've been working hard to stabilize the patient, the emergency department staff have entered Mr. Bengelfin's identifying demographic information from his driver's license into the regional registration system or the emergency department registration system. And that has sent out a request, not only to our local institutions that participate, but across the NHIN to the other participating NHIEs in this demonstration and has retrieved information. As I authenticate myself into the system and then enter Mr. Bengelfin's demographic information to choose him, I'm hoping that I will find some information from his past care that will be helpful. I enter his name, choose Mr. Bengelfin from my local registration record, and I'm really excited to see that there is information from several of the local health information exchanges in our region that might be helpful. I've noticed that his home address is in Cincinnati, Ohio, and so I turn first to the information from HealthBridge as that might contain the richest, most robust information. Scrolling down, what I'm looking at here is a document that's been shared in a common format across all of the NHIEs and displayed here in a, a more human-readable format. And I noticed that he has two diagnoses of interest, diabetes and also a history of an acute myocardial infarction. At the same time, I note that he's had a previous reaction to contrast uh, used for CT studies, and in fact, an anaphylactic reaction, a life-threatening reaction. Some very helpful information. Closing that document, I switch to a different view of information, the results view, where this data has been extracted from those documents and formatted into a computer interpretable or processable format, structured data. And scrolling down, I notice some even more helpful information, in this case from HealthLink in Bloomington, Indiana, where the patient had a diagnosis of deep venous thrombosis just a few days ago. I also noticed that he has an elevated INR, an indication that his blood has been thinned with drugs, but also that that drug thinner has not been uh, sufficiently adjusted, that his blood is as thin as it should be uh, to treat that condition. With this information, uh, I, I begin to become concerned that he may have had a blood clot that has migrated from his leg to his lung, a pulmonary embolus. And with that information, I begin to my diagnostic evaluation, which includes a CT scan of his lungs. But before I give him the contrast necessary for that study, because of the allergy information that I'm aware of, I'm able to pretreat the patient with steroids and antihistamines, reducing the risk that he will have an adverse reaction. 
The CT scan confirms the presence of a large pulmonary embolus and we initiate appropriate therapy. And Joe survives a catastrophic illness, one that could easily have been fatal. I'll turn it back to Dr. Rowland for closing comments. Thank you, Dr. Overhage. So how did this happen? Uh, as Joe came in, was identified and registered, a request went out to the health information exchanges through the NHIN. Those health information exchanges participating responded and re retrieved, were able to look up and retrieve a patient summary record, which was then routed back to the, the emergency room physician. This provided critical information to make the diagnosis and to initiate life-saving treatment. So in the demonstration you saw, this just took a matter of seconds. And I cannot tell you just from a personal professional level how powerful and effective this would be for physicians in the field. This is something that in Indiana we have, we have experienced in central Indiana. And we look forward to the opportunity at a national level to experience this type of information flow so that physicians can really deliver the type of care they're trained to, to provide. So in closing, I would say that emergency, emergencies are quite common. We have the opportunity for the, the NHIN to save lives, to improve the practice of physicians, to improve the direct delivery of health care. Um, so I would urge us all to, to work very hard to make the NHIN an operational reality. I appreciate the time, and this ends the emergency care scenario.